Well, God bless each and every one of you for tuning in to today's Open Your Eyes. No, we're not doing an Open Your Eyes People broadcast. We're doing an Moab School of Ministry broadcast. So let's start that again. <laughs> God bless each and every one of you for tuning in to today's live School of Ministry class. E ESOM, EMOAF School of Ministry. Uh, today uh, we are completing the last class of the third exegesis. And uh, not only are we completing the very last class, the last course, which is course six, four ways God used the scripture to speak to you. This also will conclude all classes all three sessions of the exegesis that started all the way back in September 26, 2017 for the school year before final exams next week. So hallelujah, hallelujah. If you've yet to do so, please quickly grab your Bible and uh, your notepad, your laptop, however you take notes. And please write down the following exegesis three, propositions four, Understanding the Bible, today is course six, four ways God uses scripture to speak to us or to you, May 15, 2018, Tuesday, and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus, holy and true is your name in all the earth. Thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your blessing upon us, your spirit poured out on us. Father, we ask that you bless today's class. I don't expect it to be, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't expect it to be a very lengthy class. However, we ask that you would bless it, magnify yourself in it, and have us to understand, to know, and to receive, to hear what it is you would want us to in this class pertaining to this subject and anything else you desire, Lord. Father, we ask that the praises of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight today, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Bless the people, I ask, who are tuning in and who will tune in after today's live class session. It is in the name of Jesus Christ we thank you, Lord, and amen. Amen. All right, again. Exegesis 3, Propositions for Understanding the Bible. Uh, we are concluding the school year. Uh, for, for As far as all the courses goes, on this last class right now, Course 6, Four Ways God Used the Scripture to Speak to You. And then next week, there will be a final exam. And, you know, I, I really have to double check um, the schedule for next week because I'm deciding, I'm, I'm trying to... I'm contemplating as to whether I should do a finals review next week and then the final exam next, you know, the following week, or if we should just get into the final exam. I'm not quite sure yet. Typically, what we do, just as many of you students know, we do a finals review. We do a finals review before we get into the final exam. I'm thinking about just going right into the final exam next week, but I, again, I got to double check that. Um, I'll, I'll be seeking the Lord on this, actually, and he will lead and guide me on uh, this uh, decision. So, uh, anyway, without further ado, let's start today's School of Ministry class. Know that God will use Scripture to speak to you in four ways. Go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verse 16 and 17. It looks like we just lost Facebook. If you know anyone who would be tuning in to us via our Facebook page, just take a moment to quickly direct them to our YouTube channel where we are live right now or our website where we are also live at www.openyoureyespeople.com. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And it says the following. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, 
thoroughly equipped for every good work. Write that scripture down as our foundational context or our foundational verse for today's class. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verse 16 and 17. So what are the four ways that God will use scripture to speak to us? Well, let's get right into it. Number one. Well, actually, I got to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm separating this thing correctly here because it is four ways to speak to you, but I'm going to add an additional bullet point or four more additional bullet points on top of the four ways that God will use scripture to speak to us. So let's go into number one. Number one, to simply show or teach you something. Doctrine or teaching. So let's write that down. Number one. To simply show or teach you something. Such as doctrine or teaching. Four ways God uses scripture to speak to you. Number one, to simply show or teach you something in the doctrine or the teaching of the doctrine. Number two, to reprove, rebuke when you have knowingly done wrong. Let's write that down. To reprove, rebuke when you have knowingly done wrong. Number three, four ways God uses scripture to speak to you to correct something that you believe which is simply wrong. Let's write that down. To correct something you believe which is simply wrong. And number four, to instruct you in how to, in the how to's of living righteously. To instruct you in the how to's of living righteously. Now there's a process to each one of these four ways that God uses, that God does. It's his own process. So I want us to visit those four bullet points that go in conjunction with each and every one of these ways that God uses. Understand that this, all four of these ways are found in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17, the scripture that we just read. The four ways God uses scripture to speak to us. Again, let's visit number one. To simply show or teach you something, doctrine in the doctrine or the teaching of the scriptures. God will speak to us to simply teach us. We are students of the word of God. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. And make no mistake about it, God uses his word to speak to us. As a matter of fact, anytime you receive a word of God, it must line up with the word of God. The Logos word of God. 
Anytime you receive a rhema word of God, which is a word of God that may be quickened in your spirit, that the Lord speaks to you, that the Holy Spirit speaks to you, you will it will it will always line up with the word of God. If it doesn't, it may not be a word from God. The second way God uses scripture to speak to you is to reprove and rebuke when you have knowingly done wrong. God does this quite often. People, uh, you know, Christians who maybe deal unfairly, who are taking bribes, who uh, are in, uh, who, who are coming close to sinning or maybe involved in sin and have tried to justify it. And as they sit down to partake in their daily Bible study habits for a few minutes each day, the Lord, by His Holy Spirit, will show them a word that will convict them. I apologize for that. The Lord will show them. I, I don't want any interruptions. I got to make sure that doesn't happen again. I apologize for that. I, I don't. It's quite annoying when something like that happens, especially when I don't approve it. Turn off. Turn that off. Especially when we're in the middle of a live class. Anyway, as I was saying, is that as you know, as a person is engaged in their in, in their daily Bible study or just seeking the Word of God, maybe for understanding or you know answers to a particular question in their life, the Lord will use the Word of God. He will speak to that person who either is close to sin or involved in sin and seeking to justify their sin. God will use the Word of God. God will use His own Word to convict that one of their sin so that they can be cleansed from their unrighteousness. They can have their spirit be renewed within them so that they can repent. So again, God uses Scripture to speak to us to, repu to reprove Excuse me. <coughs> Let me turn off my fan. Pardon me. Ouch. Wow. That hurt. Uh, to reprove, to rebuke. When you have knowingly done wrong. The third way God uses scripture to speak to you is to correct something you believe which is simply wrong. If you have a belief, God forbid it's anyone who's tuning in, but if you have a belief that God is female, God will show you in his word, he will speak to you in his word by the Holy Spirit as he shows you scriptures that God is not a woman. God is always referred to in a masculine sense in the, both Hebrew and the Greek. And God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, that's just one example. There are many ways that we can be corrected. That the Lord knows that we're believing something that's erroneous. Not, you, know, whether, no, you know, whether knowingly or unknowingly. Whether consciously or subconsciously, the Holy Spirit knows all these things. And as we are, you know, as we're reading the Logos, Word of God, the, 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 the written Word of God. God will correct us. He will speak to us if we are believing something simply which is wrong so that we can be led in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Search me, O God, the psalmist David says. Try me. Know if there's any wicked way in me and lead me to the way of everlasting. Number four. The fourth way God used the scripture to speak to you is to instruct you in the how-tos of living righteously and rightly dividing the word of truth. So what's the process that God uses in each of these ways? Well, let's go into that. God's processes. Let's write that down. God's processes. And I, I, I said processes. I'll just say God's process. Let's not make this difficult here. God's process. He, number one, 
He establishes a relationship with us. He establishes a relationship with us. If you want God to speak to you, you must be his son, you must be his daughter, you must be his child. You know, not everyone's a child of God. Did you know that? We Now, please understand what I mean by this. We are all created by God. Every man, woman, and child that has ever lived, that is living now, and will ever live, each and every one of us, whether male or female, Jew or Greek, slave or free, old, young, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, doesn't matter. Every person has been made in the image of God. We have been created by God. Whether you are a believer in Jesus Christ or you are an atheist, you were made in the image of God. But not everyone is a child of God. You see, to be a child of God, you must be born again. You must be born again by the Spirit of God to be part of the kingdom of God. Thus establishing you to be a child of God. And so, for God to speak to you through the Word of God, you have to be His child. God establishes a relationship with you. Beloved, you must be born again. There is no way you'll be able to understand the Word of God unless you are born again. The Word of God is a very mysterious Word. It's a holy Word. It's a Word that many have found themselves in destruction because they have twisted the Word of God. It's a holy thing. It's a holy charge. It's not a fairy tale book. It's not a fiction or non-fiction book. It's not a book to be mixed in and mingled in with other books on a bookshelf. It is the Word of God. This is not the Word of Shakespeare. It's not the Word of your famous motivational speakers or an autobiography of a well-known individual who once lived and now is buried in the grave. This is the Word of God. And in order to receive and understand the Word of God, in order for God to speak to you through His Scripture, for you to receive it, for you to truly understand it, you must be in a relationship with God. He establishes a relationship with us. You know, I have many who tune in to our broadcast ministry, many who is part of our end time church, but not all the people that are part of our end time church is in my immediate family. I have a remnant. I have an immediate family. I have my sons and my daughter and my spouse, my husband who, you know, they, 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 they know the inner workings. They know me in a way that you will never know me. The precious viewer, the precious brother or sister in the body of Christ who tune into this ministry. Why? Because there's a relationship that's established. We are all created by God, but we are not all children of God. But the moment you give your life to Jesus Christ, the moment that you open up the door as he's knocking on your heart and he comes in and he subs with you and he makes you his child. He establishes a relationship with you, and now you are able to hear from God. Now you are truly able to understand what it is that He is saying, what your purpose is in this life, why you were created, what it all means, the mysteries of life. You don't have to go to gurus. They don't know anyway. They're just as lost as you are. Many of them are involved in demonic activity. Let's go to number two.
builds character. God's process is that he builds character. I want to add to this. He builds character as we learn to overcome personal issues. He builds character as we learn to overcome issues. To have your character built by the mighty hand of God is a key component for you to walk the way God has called you to in these last days as a Christian, as a man, woman, or child of God. God's process is that he's very interested in how our character is, whether we are a person of integrity, and he uses his word to establish this in us, to make us a man, woman, or child of our word. That when we say we're going to do something, we're going to go through with it. We're going to make sure we do it, even to our own hurt. Building character. And as we build, as God builds character, his own character in us, as the sin nature is crucified, as we walk hand in hand with Jesus Christ in our daily lives, we will learn to overcome issues that once were big mountains and they will become small plains because this is what the word of the Lord does. I want to show you that in scripture. Go with me very quickly to Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. Zechariah 4 verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 says the following. So he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel you shall become a plain. And he shall bring forth the capstones with shouts of grace grace to it this is character building this is what God does in us as his word as his person as his spirit as his presence and his glory builds character we overcome issues that mountain that was so great becomes a plain he builds us into the sons and daughters he has called us to be. And when we are built up in the character of God by his word, when we heed and receive the word of God, being empowered to do so by the Holy Spirit, we see things the way God sees it. And what the mere human being who's not born again sees as something so great, so massive, a child of God will see it as nothing. They'll say, what is that? Who are you, O oh great mountain? Who are you, you uncircumcised Philistine? Who are you to try to come against the anointed house of God, the anointed child of God? Before me, you shall become a plain, flat as the ground, as nothing. This is a powerful understanding as to the way God does it through his process. Let's go to number three. Number three, he equips and gifts. God's process, he, equip, he equips and gifts. There's more to that. I want to add to that, but I'm, 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 I'm pointing these specifics out. As a matter of fact, I'm going to underline the specifics here so that there won't be a misunderstanding. He establishes, terrible marker. 
He establishes, he builds character, he equips, and he gifts. He equips and he gifts us for the functioning in the body. He equips and gifts us for the functioning in the body. And I, I put equip, it should be equips. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, please. And I really, uh, now before we go any further, please write down the scripture context for number two that we, uh, we, we referenced in Zechariah chapter 4. And we read from verse 6 through 7. And now I'm asking for the third process that we uh, go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 says the following, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Powerful portion of scripture. <clears throat> Powerful portion of scripture. Be sure to add from verse 11 through verse 16. God's process is that he also equips and gifts us for the functioning in the body. This is by his word. This is by God using scripture to speak to us, to teach us, to reprove us, to rebuke us, to correct us, to instruct us. When he equips you, it's for his body. When he gifts you, it's for the functioning of the body. I'm so glad that when he equipped and gifted my legs, that they didn't just go on and do their own thing. They didn't decide to dismantle from my body and go become its own thing, its own glorified thing outside of the body. My legs being equipped and gifted for the functioning of my body so that I can walk and go places and kneel and worship the Lord and all that God has called my legs to do uh, is for the function of the body, the temple. So it is that we as a body of Christ 
are equipped and gifted for the functioning of the body. We just read it in detail. We have been gifted and equipped for the work of the ministry. Not so we can take it to the world. Not so we can cast these pearls before swine. You know what the Bible says about that. I want to read it to you. Jesus himself says something very powerful with regards to casting such holy things, casting your gifts, casting your, uh, how God has equipped you to the world system and just giving it up or selling it out, becoming a sellout to the glory of God. I'll, I'll read it to you. Go with me very quickly to the gospel of Matthew chapter seven, verse six, the gospel of Matthew chapter seven, verse six. Jesus says the following, do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. When God equips us, when God gifts us, it is with a holy calling. So why are you trying to sell it out to the world? Why are you wanting God to bless the pigsty? Why are you getting upset when he doesn't allow uh, your, you know, this world to, to promote you and, and to make you feel so special because you know that you've been equipped and called by God? Could it be, and it is, that God's equipping, God's equipping of you and the gifts that he's given to you was not for the world to begin with. It was for his body. It was for the, for the work of the ministry. Do you know how many people who've ha, who have been equipped? And I'll just use this as an, as an example. How many Christians have been equipped? How many people have been equipped with a beautiful voice to sing? And they started off in the church. Many of these, uh, 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 you know, now, now many of these pop stars and these um, vocalists, these Hollywood singer elitists, who are out there singing such ungodly, abominable, wretched, disgusting, detestable songs, and people are just rocking and rolling to it, and they're loving it, and they're jamming to it, and, 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 and many, many of these singers started off in the church. God equipped them and gifted them with a voice, not to sell it out, but to worship him and to lead others into the presence of God. To lead others into the joy of the Lord. To administer healing and edification. Love. To the body. But above all, to please God. Because when we worship him, we please him. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Worship the Lord your God, and yet many of these gifts have just been sold out to the world system, really sold out to the devil. But it was never meant to be. God's process is that when he equips us and he gifts us, it is for the functioning in the body. Let's go to the fourth one. God's process is that he releases us into ministry. He releases us into the ministry. Now there's more to this. I actually want to add more, but we're going to underline that in red. So we know there's, you know, that's the key. That's the point of this sentence, of this number four here. He releases us into the ministry, service and purpose. Service and purpose. It's all for his work. It's all for his glory. It's all for the glory of God. It is so we will no longer be children tossed to and fro 
with every wind of doctrine. If you have an anointing to preach, it is not so you can be part of a Hollywood sitcom for preachers, looking like a circus. If you have an anointing to sing, it is not so you can serve Satan in this secular, ungodly, adulterous generation, but it's to the glory of God. If you have an anointing to build, it is to build for the glory of God, not for this, 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 this generation, again, this world that is passing away. If God has equipped you, it is for service and purpose to release you into the ministry. That's the only thing that's going to be weighed on the scales on that day as to whether your gifts that he has given to you was used for the glory of God. For the glory of God. Now, Jesus discipled his followers this way. So recognize which aspect God is currently dealing with you about at any season of time. When reading the Bible any passage of the Bible, any scripture of the Bible, you want to ask yourself some basic questions. Let me just add this in as a bonus. You want to ask yourself some basic questions. So here's a little summary of tips, if you will. Summary of tips. I'll just put it right here. Summary of tips. When reading when reading the Bible who is speaking you want to ask yourself who is speaking in this portion of scripture in this book the you know the book of Jeremiah You want to ask, who are they addressing? When Jesus was speaking in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, who was Jesus speaking to? As we rightly divide the word of truth. And I use the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5 as a mere example, okay? What are they saying? What are they saying? Why are they saying it? What's the point? What's the main point? And last but certainly not least, how does all this apply to me today? How does all this apply to me today? So again, summary of tips when reading the Bible, who is speaking, who are they addressing, what are they saying, why are they saying it, and how does all this apply to me today? Oh, my light. Wait, what up? I want to move out the way so you can write that down here. So let's go over this again very quickly. Course 6, four ways God used the scripture to speak to you. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17 is our scriptural context or, or reference for the entirety of today's class. Number one, God used the scripture to speak to you to simply show or teach you something in the doctrine or teaching. 
Number two, to reprove, rebuke when you have knowingly done wrong. Number three, to correct something you believe which is simply wrong. And number four, to instruct you in the how-tos of living righteously. Those were four ways God used the scripture to speak to you. But then there's also a process, God's process, that number one, he establishes a relationship with us. Number two, he builds character as we learn to overcome issues. And we read Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6 through 7 to confirm this word. Number three, he equips and gifts us for the functioning in the body. As we read in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 through 16. And number four, he releases us into the ministry, service, and purpose. And, you know, for number one, I'm, I, I want to add a scripture, even though we didn't write, even though we did not read it, I'll add one because it goes with it. And we will just simply put the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. We also talked about the summary of tips when reading the Bible. This is just a summary. Feel free to use it. It's the who, who, what, why, how. Who is speaking? Who are they addressing? What are they saying? Why are they saying it? And how does all this apply to me today? I can't, you know, please understand that the Bible still applies to us today. It is not a book for people who are in the grave and it doesn't matter anymore this is a this book th the words in this book is living and it's powerful it's a life-giving book jesus said my words they are spirit and they are life your flesh your own your own works profit you nothing he said it is my word that gives spirit and gives life there is a glory in this covenant there is a glory in the old covenant and then there's a greater glory in the new covenant God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. All his promises are yes and amen. His word is for today. Make no mistake about it. And if nobody else, if nobody else wants to receive it, I'm going to receive it. Because I know it's for today. I know that his word is living and powerful. I know his word heals. His word saves. His word delivers. His word sets free. His word produces miracles, signs, and wonders. His word is true. Let God be true and every man a liar. God says, I hold my own word even above my own name. His word is life. And so much more. And I'm grateful for your word, O oh Lord. It's abundance. It's satisfying. It's comforting. The word of God blesses us to survive. We give thanksgiving by the word of God. His word restores our health. It heals our wounds. His word makes watchmen on the wall to show forth, uh, to, to, to cry out aloud, to let everyone know that judgment is coming. His word makes our souls like a well-watered garden. His word takes out sorrow so that it will be no more. His his word blesses us with goodness and kindness and it satisfies the people. His word is life-giving water. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Hear the word of the Lord and be healed, the Bible says. The Lord blesses us. His word loves us. His word establishes us. It builds us up. His word is food and it is nourishment and it is healing. His word is wheat and new wine and oil. His word is is beautiful his word makes the crooked places straight his word blesses us with supplications his word makes us strong his word oh his word we got to declare his word we got to declare it in the aisles afar off we got to declare it among the housetops we have to declare it we have to sound off his word blessed be the name of the lord our god who has given us his word in Jesus mighty name. Amen. I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to today's live school of ministry class. As always, it is a privilege and a pleasure and an honor to bring to you the word of God. Now, next week, I, I, I got it. I have to, I'm still undecisive, but next week,
we're either going to get into the final review or we're just going to get right into the final exams. Okay, I have to decide. I'm actually seeking the Lord on this. Uh, but know this, you have officially uh, completed, if you've been with me since the very beginning on these classes, you have officially completed all classes, all sessions, all school exegesis courses of the entire year since September 26, 2017. Woo! Hallelujah! 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 I'm so happy. That was a, that was a lot of work. But how rewarding, how blessed it is to, to receive all this wonderful, you know, this goodness. God's word is food and it's life. And this was a buffet and we're not done. We're not done. We look forward to next year's school of ministry, which is really going to be this year, but it's going to be for the school year 2018-2019. And we'll release more information in the coming uh, weeks. Uh, but anyway, we still have to do the final exam for this school year. And again, it will be uh, either next week or the following week. Be sure to follow us on Facebook. Uh, uh, you know, check in on our website. That's really where the information is going to be as well. It's going to be on our website at www.emof.org. Let me uh, write down the website here for you. www.emof.org. So just uh, check in periodically. Uh, to find out uh, the updates with regards to next week's uh, class, whether we're going to go right into the final exams or if we will have a final exam review. Now, if it turns out that we don't have a final exam review uh, and we just get into the final exams, if you have not completed all the classes, don't take the final exams. You really can't. It is not. We we it, it, we won't. It it won't be accepted uh, because. The, in order for you to even uh, participate in the final exams, you must have taken all the class courses. Because at the end of the school year, once you complete all the final exams, you are eligible to receive a certificate of achievement or a certificate of excellence. It's a really nice certificate here at the School of Ministry. But in order to even receive that, you have to have completed all your classes. So even if you... You know, if you claim, well, you know, I did Exegesis 1, which was 10 courses, and I did Exegesis 3, which is 6 courses, but I didn't do Exegesis 2, which is 9 courses, but that's okay because I actually passed the finals, it won't be accepted. It would actually be a failed grade. So you, uh, it, it will not be a certificate of completion until all has been completed, all the classes and, of course, the final exam. And if you want to get more information, again, on our website at www.emof.org, www.emof.org.org. And, um, it, it, you know, it's, it, if you're not part of the final exam live, it's okay. Uh, there, um, you know, you may not be ready for the final exams for another four weeks, another couple months even, because you're probably just starting these classes. No rush. The awesome thing about our school of ministry is that it's not timed. You know, you don't have six months to get it completed or your membership's revoked or anything like that. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a school of ministry that's at no charge to you. And so you get to learn at your pace, you know, and I personally enjoy that. I don't know about you, but I don't like to be rushed and trying to understand something that, you know, especially something as, as, as uh, important as the word of God. <clears throat> and uh, I'm not interested in surface level teaching and understanding. I want to get into the depths of this thing. So for me, I like to take my time and, you know, meditate on the word and, you know, really get into the teaching of this and, you know, understand it so that now when I take the test, not only will I get it correct, the answers, but this is something that I'm going to apply to my daily life. This is who I am. This, this understanding, this truth of the word of God becomes, it, it, oh, I, I walk in this truth. That's who I am now. Uh, versus just knowing enough just to pass the finals and grab a certificate. I'm not interested in that. I hope you're not either. Uh, the point of this is to, um, again, well, the point of it is what we just talked about here, to establish us, to build character in us, to equip and gift us, and to release us into the ministry. And that's really the purpose of all of our School of Ministry classes and the School of Ministry itself. So uh, anyway, uh, thank you for tuning in. Just uh, follow us on Facebook and on YouTube and uh, get updates from our website as well. And uh, we want to ask that you help support the work of this anti ministry, that you remember us in your giving. Uh, the School of Ministry is at no charge. Very grateful to have that opportunity to make that possible. But it really is only possible because people donate. 
people donate. You have students who have donated financially towards the work of the end time ministry. Uh, you have people who are not even part of the school of ministry, but simply receive from this end time ministry donate towards it. And so it helps make the classes possible. Uh, all of it is um, uh, done financially and by the spirit of the living God. God uses finances to make the stream possible and make all that's required to have this ship run monthly possible by your financial support. So we want to ask that you take a moment and that you, and we obviously know you see the value in this work, help support it with a financial donation. Again, you can do so at www.emof.org or you can simply mail in uh, your support at P.O. Box 218 Shirts, Texas 7 8 one five four. Again, PO Box two one eight Shirts, Texas seven eight one five four. Thank you so much again for tuning in to today's School of Ministry class. Until tomorrow, may the Lord richly bless you. And I, you know, I'm thinking, I sure would like to do another broadcast, maybe later today. We'll see as the Lord leads. But until then, have a wonderful day in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.